Hello, my name is Ram and welcome to another video of Matuklasan. Math is an integral part of providing practical solutions to many industrial problems. That is why at an early stage, math students are taught to solve different problems so that they will be able to see that they can apply their mathematical abilities to find the solution to a problem. Unfortunately, some students hate math because of their difficulties in the subject. A man once said, do not worry too much about your difficulties in mathematics. I can assure you that mine are still greater. This man is Albert Einstein. This only proves that even the brightest minds encounter difficulties in math. But what is important is overcoming these difficulties. According to George Polya, mathematical problem solving is finding a way around a difficulty around an obstacle, and finding a solution to a problem that is unknown. George Polya is a Hungarian mathematician and considered the father of problem solving in mathematics education because of his many contributions in the subject. One of these is the four-step process for problem solving. It includes understanding the problem, devising a plan, carrying out the plan, and looking back. To understand the problem, you need to look for it, the information given. You can ask, what is the unknown? What are the data? What are the conditions? Are the conditions sufficient to determine the unknown? Insufficient, redundant, or contradictory? You can also draw a figure to visualize the information. And to organize and connect this information, you could think of a suitable notation for the given. After understanding the problem, we need to devise a plan. We can do it by making a representation, making a calculated guess, going through the process, or revising the problem. This part is very important. That's why I'm going to discuss some of the strategies that we could use later in the video. Now, if you have a solid strategy or plan for the solution, we can carry out this plan by using our mathematical knowledge, skills, and logical thinking. This is the solution part in the problem-solving process. After finding a correct solution or answer for the problem, we need to check the solution for us to improve and seek alternative solutions if necessary. For example, by looking at the problem, we can see that shapes represent numbers. And the first three equations are clues to find the missing number in the last equation. Whenever I see such problem in Facebook, I always translate these figures into variables. So in this case, I let T be the triangle, C represents or represents the circle, S for the square, and X for the missing value. By rewriting the first equation, I will change these triangles into letter T. So I'll have T plus T plus T equals 30. For the second equation, I'll have T plus 2 C's equals 18. For this third equation, I'll have C minus S equals 2. And for the last one, I will have T plus C plus S equals X. Now, by using my knowledge in algebra, I know that I can rewrite the first equation into just 3t equals 30, right? Because adding these 3t's will give me 3t. And this one can be written into t plus 2c equals 18. Because c plus c in algebra is 2c. Now, let us carry out the plan. To solve 4t in the first equation, we need to divide both sides by 3. So that t is just equal to 10. Because 30 divided by 3 is 10. Now, if you don't have a knowledge on algebra, you can just think of a number that you need to multiply to 3 for us to have 30. And that is 10. Right? Now, since we all know that t here is 10, we can now solve for the remaining value of c. By using your knowledge again in algebra, c will be equal to 4. Or you just think of a number that you need to multiply to 2 and 
multiplying you to 10 will give you 18. That is C equals 4. Now, since C here is equal to 4, we just need to think of a number that we need to subtract from 4 for us to have an answer of 2. So S must be 2. Right? So since we got the values of T, C, and S, we can now rewrite this equation into 10 plus 4 plus 2 equals X. So that our final answer for X is 16. Yep, that's it. But we don't stop it there, guys, because we need to look back and check our answer. We have found out that t is equal to 10. So if this triangle is 10, adding 3 tens will give us 30. So it's correct on the first equation. We know that, or we have found out that triangle is 10 and the circle is 4. So adding 10 and 2 fours will give us 18. So it's also correct on the second equation. If the circle is 4 and the square is 2, then 4 minus 2 is equal to 2. That is definitely correct. And by claiming or by confirming that these three equations are correct, we can now say that this is really 10, this is 4, and this is 2. So that our answer is really 16. Aside from solving a lot of problems, the best way to become a skilled problem solver is to learn many strategies. And here are some of the useful problem solving strategies. By looking at this magic square problem, we can see here that we need to distribute these four numbers in the cells. So that the sum of let's say this diagonal pattern will give us 15. And also, if we are trying to put a number here in this cell, the sum should also be 15. And for this, I'm planning to use the guess and check strategy because we need to think of an answer that might work and then we need to check our guest. So in this case, you can pause the video if you want to answer it first on your own and then continue the video to see the final solution. Let us start writing our guesses so we can start seeing patterns. So this is 2 and 6. 2 plus 6 is 8. So this must be 7 because 7 plus 8 is 15. How about this cell? 5 plus 1 is 6. So this must be 9 because 9 plus 5 plus 1 is equal to 15. So how about this cell? I can use this 7 and 5 to make a right guess for this cell. 7 plus 5 is 12, so this must be 3 for it to become 15. Now, I just need to add 6 plus 1 equals what? 8 for it to become 15. But remember that we need to look back, so we need to check our answers. 2 plus 7 plus 6 is 15. So, 9 plus 5 plus 1 is also 15. 4 plus 3 plus 8 is also 15. How about the sum on the vertical patterns? 2 plus 9 plus 4 is 15. 7 plus 5 plus 3 is also 15. 6 plus 1 plus 8 is also 15. How about this diagonal? Yes, 2 plus 5 plus 8 is still 15. So, by doing this repeatedly, we can confirm now that our answer is correct. Making a list or a table is a way to organize data presented in a problem. This problem-solving strategy allows us to discover relationships and patterns among data. In this problem, Shelton has asked his girlfriend Amy to make all the decisions for their date on her birthday. She will pick a fast food chain and an activity for the date. Sheldon will choose a gift for her. The local chains include Jollimi, Mang Inasar, and Chow King Yan. The activities she can choose from are bowling and videoke. Sheldon will buy her either a bag or flowers. How many outcomes are there for these three decisions? We start our list with Amy choosing Jollimi 
and bowling for the activity. But Sheldon will either choose bag or flowers for the gift. So we have two outcomes right away. If Amy will choose video game instead of bowling, then we have another two outcomes. Notice here that when choosing a local chain, there are four possible outcomes. So if I'm going to choose Mang Inasar or Amy will choose for Mang Inasar, we have another four outcomes. And of course, if Amy will choose for Chao King Yan, we have another outcomes. So here, we have a total of 12 possible outcomes for their dates. So the answer is 12. This one is a common problem-solving strategy. Most of the time, we draw a picture, diagram, or model to understand the problem. And by doing this, we'll be able to think about the best solution for the problem. In this example, Mr. Yoso built a square fence around his property. He used seven vertical posts on each side of the fence. So how many posts did he use all together? Now, let's say I'm looking at the top of the property and I'm going to use circles to represent the vertical posts. So, the first side of the fence has seven posts. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. Now, for the other side, since it's a square, we also have seven posts. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So by doing this repeatedly, we'll be able to see the total number of posts. So by counting the posts manually, the answer is 24. Now you might say this is easy because all you need to do is to multiply 7 to 4 because we have a square. But 7 times 4 is equal to 28. So this is wrong because as you can see these are counted twice let's have this next example in the classroom of miss kanya the desks are organized in equal rows jocelyn sits in the desk that is second from the front and fourth from the back there is one desk on the right and three on the left of jocelyn's desk how many desks are in the room so we could start by drawing the place of Jocelyn. So Jocelyn is second from the front. So there is one desk in front of him in, in front of her. So since she is fourth from the back, there are three other desks behind her or behind her. There is one desk on her right and three desks on her left. So therefore we have 25 students in the classroom because all we need to do is to fill out the remaining slots. Since we have equal number of desks for each side, then we have 25 students or desks in the classroom. Math patterns are sequences that repeat based on a rule, and a rule is a set way to calculate or solve a problem. By identifying the pattern in a problem, we'll be able to predict the answer. In this problem, the days of the week are given up to Thursday, and we need to find the number of street that corresponds to Thursday. So here, we can see right away the pattern 1, 2, 3 for the unit's digit. So this could be 4. But how do we find the next numbers or digits on the left side of 4? Notice that 7 was derived by adding 6 and 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. Therefore, this 9 was derived by adding 7 and 2. So therefore, to get the next digits on the left side of 4, we just need to add 9 and 3. 9 plus 3 here is 12. So the next number or the street we are looking for is 124. Sometimes we need to form different equations and mathematical expressions to solve a particular problem. For this example, we have a hexagon with particular number of dots with each side. For the hexagon with 42 dots, how many dots are there on each side? And how about the hexagon with 
300 dots. This time, I'm going to represent D as the total number of dots in the hexagon and S for the number of dots, dots in each side. So in the first figure, notice that we have 6 dots. And for each side, or for each side, we have 2 dots. For the second figure, we have a total of how many dots? We have 12 dots. And we have 3 dots for each side. In the third figure, notice that we have 18 dots. And we have 4 dots for each side. So, what if I'm looking for the next answer for the total number of dots if I have 5 dots on each side of the hexagon? So, notice that 6, 12, and 18 are all multiples of 6. And you can actually get 12 by multiplying 6 to 2. So, all we need to do is to multiply what? Yes, we just need to multiply 6 to 4 to get 24. And to get 12, we need to multiply 2 to 6. And to get 18, we need to multiply 3. So what I'm doing is multiplying 6 to S minus 1. Because let's say I'm looking for 6, I need to use 5 instead. So 6 times 5 is 30 for you to get the next total number of dots. So the formula or the mathematical equation for this is D equals 6 times S minus 1. And now we can use this formula to solve the problem. So if I have 42 dots, D is equal to 42. So all we need to do now is to solve for the value of S to find the number of each side in a hexagon with 42 dots by using your skills in algebra s is just equal to what yes it's just equal to 8 oops i forgot this one okay so for a hexagon with 300 dots all you need to do is to substitute 300 to d and then using the same formula and by using your algebra skills and solving this equation for S, the answer is 51. How about you try these examples? I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer here is 6. But why? In this problem, the answer is 9. Again, why? Eliminating some of the possibilities is also one of the ways to solve a problem. So here, Jason, Zach, Billy, Trini, and Kimberly are a group of superheroes. And we need to arrange the ages of these superheroes in increasing order. Our first clue suggests that Zach is younger than Trini. So if this is Trini, Zach should be below Trini. Zach is not the youngest in the group. So there is always a younger superhero to Zach. In the third clue, only one superhero is older than Kimberly. So if Kimberly is younger than Billy, then it must be Billy and then Kimberly. Now, remember that Zach is not the youngest in the group. So there is another one person who is younger than him. Who is he? Yes, it's Jason. So the youngest is Jason, followed by Zach, Trini, Kimberly, and Billy as the oldest one. Let's try another example. Lolita, Brihad, Jocelyn, and Armida were recently elected as the new officers of the Castro Foundation. From the following clues, Determine which position each holds. For the elimination process, we can use this table containing the names and the positions. 
The first clue says that Armida is younger than the president but older than the treasurer. So she can't be the president and treasurer. The second clue tells us that Lolita and the secretary are both the same age. So Lolita can't be the secretary. And they are the youngest members of the group. So Armida is also not the secretary because Armida is older and not the youngest. For the third clue, Jocelyn and the secretary are next door neighbors. So Jocelyn is not the secretary. From this elimination, we can now say that Armida is the vice president because it's the only option for her. While Brihad is the secretary because this is the only available cell for this column. Now, so Brihad is not the president, the vice president, and the treasurer. So, Jocelyn is also not the vice president. Now, since Brihad or the secretary has the same age with the treasurer. So therefore, Lolita is the treasurer. Because they're both the youngest in the group. And the only available slot now for Jocelyn is president. So the president is Jocelyn. The vice president is Armida. The secretary is Brihad. And the treasurer is Lolita. When a succession of events are involved, working backwards is one of the strategies that we could use. In this example, Martina got on the school bus. At the stop after Martina's, four students got on. Seven students got on the bus at the next stop. At the last stop before the school, nine students got on. When the bus arrived at school, 41 students got off. How many students were already in the bus when Martina got on? Since 41 students got off the bus, the total number of students inside the bus is 41. And uh, at the last stop before the school, 9 students got on, so we need to subtract 9 from 41. 7 students got on the bus before the last stop, so we need to subtract 7 again. And after Martina rode the bus, there are four students that got on. So we need to subtract another four. But we need to identify the number of students when Martina got on the bus. So we need to subtract Martina. Now, 41 minus 9 minus 7 minus 4 minus 1, the answer is 20. So there are 20 students on the bus when Martina got on. Now, how about you try this problem by working backwards? I'm going to tell you the answers so that you'll have a guide. So Dave is 34, Tony is 11, and Andrea is 32. And that's all for this video. If you want more video tutorial in math in the modern world, you can always check my playlist in the description down below. Thank you for listening and see you on the next video.